Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Anya Siddiqui, and joining us today is Michelle from Robert Half. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Well, we're very happy to have Michelle back. She's done a few webinars with us over the years, and it's always great to have her back. I can see that there's a great turnout already, and we had, um, we had a lot of uh, people registered. So before we move forward, I'm just going to quickly make sure that everyone understands that you are all on listen only mode. So we won't be able to hear you, but Michelle will be taking your questions towards the end of the webinar. And for that, please type your questions into the Q&A tab. And for best results, please use a laptop or a desktop computer. If you are using mobile devices such as um, cell phones or tablets, please um, download the Zoom app. And please note that this webinar will be recorded and you will be able to watch it later. Um, and we will be sending out uh, the recording later on, maybe um, a few hours from now. And um, just a tip, the, the link that you use to register today, that link turns into the recording link. So you can access the same link to um, access the recording as well. And just to tell you a little bit about Access, we've been around for over 30 years helping job seekers such as yourselves. Um, just in the past year alone, we were able to serve 34,000 job seekers and we work with multiple employers. We have over 30 tailored programs, which include our sector specific bridging programs. And we've got six locations in the GTA with our newest seventh location opening up in New Market and our um, online location, which is online services. And right now at the moment, everything is doing, uh, been going on virtually. So um, to find out more, I'm actually gonna give you more information towards the end of the webinar. So I'm going to get right into it with Michelle. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to see so many people logged on. Um, so as many of you know, my name is Michelle Hannah-Cannon. I work as a resource manager at Robert Huff Management Resources, um, but I'm actually on the vendor management services team, which focuses into the financial services market, but we have a number of different divisions of focus in accounting, finance, office administration, legal, technology, um, creative, and so on. So um, definitely lots of different areas to our organization. My presentation is to give you some ideas about um, conducting a job search in the era that we're living in right now. You know, business environments have shifted where most people, you know, must remain at home right now. While that might change soon, it might change a little bit um, the way we work and, you know, we don't know what's ahead in the future. So are companies still hiring? Um, this is a question many people ask me, um, you know, and given all the business closures happening during the COVID pandemic, we're seeing it on the news, you're hearing it from your friends. And the answer is yes, companies are definitely still hiring. Um, you know, they're, they're moving forward with business and that includes hiring. And I know people that I'm hearing having success in hiring. And these aren't just in essential businesses. Um, so definitely you don't wanna put your job search on hold. So today's agenda, we're going to look at how to find a job in a world where you can't go out and network or meet with people, including hiring managers, where you can't just drop in in person. Um, you know, it's how to find a job remotely. Then we'll talk a little bit once you're hired, how to start working successfully in a new team when you maybe can't be in the same space as someone else. For many of us, this is a new normal. And um, while there's some open jobs during the, the pandemic, that must require workers to physically report to a business location, the medical field. I've even worked some roles where they do require someone to come in person. Um, you know, you definitely have to be prepared for searching, applying, and definitely doing work remotely. So this is relevant regardless of the area that, an industry that you might be in. So everyone searching for a job has been thrown a huge curveball. I think even people for, who are working and now working in a new normal. So at a time when most businesses are faced with unexpected disruptions and in-person meetings are definitely off limits, um, searching for a job can be a bit challenging. Um, and some professionals who had no plans of changing a job at the beginning of the year may have found themselves um, now on the job search again. Um, maybe they were part of a permanent layoff that requires a brand new job search. Um, so definitely different times. 
So prior to February 2020, um, the only remote parts of a job search were, you know, the searching element, you know, you looked online, the job boards, um, LinkedIn, you were submitting your resume and cover letter, and then you'd have maybe an initial phone interview. And, you know, on a rare occasion, you might be doing a video um, interview, but a lot of times that was in person. You went to the office, you might be hired in, you met the hiring managers, you prospectively met the teams. Um, but now it's amazing, like overnight things have changed. Every stage of the job search and hiring process including the interviews, and you possibly might be meeting with multiple people all at once, um, from the job offer to you know, negotiating salary, have all shifted to a remote basis, at least for the time being. And if you're a job searcher, you might have big questions about what's going on through the recruitment process, you know, having never been in the same room as the person you might, the employer you might be joining, and you might never leave to home in that job search. So I guess if there's any silver linings in the COVID crisis, we're fortunate um, that we live in the age of sophisticated communication technology. Um, even 10 years ago, we might not have been doing this, um, where an all remote job search may not have been an option. You know, online boards, um, anyone that's looked for a job, um, you know, definitely in the last decade or two are used to searching for jobs online, but they may not be beyond that. Um, so some, you know, remote jobs, some good sources, flex job, angelist, remotive, um, especially in the IT writing, editing, customer support fields, um, have been doing hiring remotely in 2020. But you don't want to just stop there. Um, although nobody's hosting in-person conferences right now, networking at the moment, you can still reach out to your professional contacts at online. So asking your LinkedIn contacts for endorsements and recommendations. And definitely remember if you've asked for that to do the same for those individuals. Um, so this might be people you've worked with in the past that can endorse your technical skills, your work ethic, your soft skills, and so on. Uh, reach out to your former colleagues and supervisors to ask them to write a, an endorsement. Um, it often helps to suggest that you'll write it out for them and let them tweak it as they see fit. Maybe give them some ideas, talk a bit about that. Let people know you're on the job hunt for a new role. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't tell people, um, but you know, that's part of your network. They may be aware of companies looking for talent that you have, and they might be able to talk um, about your profile to hiring managers or HR. Another thing you can utilize is social media, but keep in mind, not everyone's comfortable with connecting with coworkers on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, et cetera. Um, you know, and you definitely want to be active online, especially on LinkedIn and contributing to professional online communities. Joining virtual conferences may also be an option for building your digital presence and business relationship skills. There's a lot of free webinars out there right now. Um, I know I've logged on to some um, just to learn different things and connect with people virtually. Um, so definitely there's a lot and there's a lot maybe focused to different areas where your professional experience um, is. So this point, ensure it's easy for an employer to find you and that they like what they see. Um, anything you put on the internet can definitely be searchable even long after you deleted it. So you want to make sure what you're putting out there on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on your own website, the comments you're making, someone may be able to Google and search for that. And you want to make sure that leaves an employer with a positive impression. Um, you know, in terms of your LinkedIn profile, definitely you want to be updating it. Um, not just what your resume says, but, you know, also photos, video, videos, presentations, lists of accomplishments, your recent activities with professional groups, your volunteer group. Now is a great time to go and look at your LinkedIn um, profile and is it, you know, does it need some improvement? Are there are some things you should change. Should you add more stuff in there? Maybe it's your summary line. And hiring managers, I mean, they're going, they're using Google, they're going to your Facebook, the Twitter, the social accounts to reflect, see what you reflect of your, your best professional space. So make sure that, you know, if there's some stuff that you don't want out there that perhaps, you know, you look to take down, ask people to untag you in photos and make sure if there's something you can't remove, you're able to talk to that story if it comes up in the future. So 47% of senior managers said an online portfolio or personal website is the best way to stand out. Um, so this is from a recent survey that we've done. Um, so this is something where you can consolidate all your stuff, your, you know, summaries, your resume, maybe if you've been published. 
It also helps employers um, affirms you're targeting online. You can share this with them and um, you know, send it out with your resume. So maybe that's in, listed in your resume. It might be listed in the email or cover letter that you're sending out. And 49% are impressed when your network, uh, when you network with their your current their current employees. So, you know, if there's companies you want to work with, go onto their social media pages, engage in conversation with them. You know, when you're targeting them, talk to stuff that you've read online. Um, these days, many organizations have a social presence um, on some of the social media platforms. So getting help from the specialist. So another great resource to finding a job um, that sometimes people overlook is the specialized staffing agencies. So this is such as ours. Um, they can maybe alert you to jobs that are not even advertised. So in my division, we work under very tight 48 hour deadlines. So sometimes, you know, I've got a role and I'm already calling individuals. So you wanna make sure um, to maybe connect yourselves with some specialized agencies, look at, who specializes in the space that your professional experience comes from and find a few individuals to partner with. Um, we can advocate on your behalf um, and help you in terms of presenting and hopefully getting you an interview. Um, we've definitely worked throughout many, um, you know, different challenges, you know, as an organization. When you think back to 9-11, to SARS, to the financial crisis, um, and now to COVID. I mean, this is just gonna be something um, that we're going to have to work through. And definitely people within the organization have worked through a number of these situations. You know, we're able to help and talk to professionals and help them get ready um, with in terms of helping them on the remote job search. Um, can help you navigate the process and, you know, help you sort of with that job search a bit. So don't overlook temporary positions. Um, that's the area I've always focused into. When I started my career, I started, you know, doing even a couple hours and one day temporary roles as a way to gain work experience when I graduated from university. So while it may not be your ultimate goal, you know, it's definitely, you might want to be flexible to temporary work um, and taking on new assignments where applicable or new contracts. You know, obviously they're going to vary right now, but definitely not something to overlook, especially as things start to pick up again. Um, you know, and you can still be applying for full time work and then just provide, you know, you know, if you do get an opportunity down the line is providing the two weeks notice that, you know, would be expected in a full time job. And you never know. Sometimes you're in a temporary position that becomes a permanent position. Um, so definitely when you're if you're taking on a temporary or contract role, please treat it like it's a full time job, you know, take on different extra work, you know, and uh, you never know when that might open up beyond that. So the phone interview, um, this would be your first contact, you know, with a company. Um, you know, this is often the first thing we, when I'm calling people is the, the telephone conversation. So, you know, after I've gotten a resume, if there's something that I figure that this person might have for a potential job I have on the go right now, or perhaps future jobs, I'm going to pick up the phone to have a discussion with them. So you want to prepare yourself. A phone interview shouldn't get into the nitty gritty. It's usually sometimes fairly be brief. Sometimes it's a bit longer. But um, if you're expecting a call from this organization, you want to do your research on the company and the position you've applied for ahead of the call. And, um, you know, keep notes handy while you're on the phone. And then, you know, please, do, you know, if you're expecting a call from this organization, do some research ahead of time on company projects, their history, what's going on, what you're reading in the news. So this is the new job interview, live via video. So video interviews have grown in popularity in recent years, um, potentially for travel expense or timing. Um, I find that, you know, we haven't seen it as much in the temporary space, but are now starting to see it, either phone or video interviews. So this is definitely one of the, the key ways that organizations are meeting with candidates right now and will likely continue to be a primary tool beyond the COVID-19 era. If you haven't participated in a video interview before, um, you definitely need to maybe do be prepared and do some practice. And many people are still getting used to this whole video thing. 
You know, you might not even be FaceTiming or using Skypes with friends and family until COVID. So many of us are still really getting used to this, this as a new normal. So in terms of the video interview, like I was saying, you want to prepare. Um, you want to set up a video call with a friend or family member at least a day or two ahead of time. You want to make sure the technology is going to work. So you want to use the same video platform that you'd be using for the interview. So make sure it works well on your laptop or tablet. Um, avoid using a smartphone if possible. Sometimes that you know maybe doesn't work as well. And give yourself some time to troubleshoot any issues. Obviously, if you only have a smartphone, that is what you're going to have to use. Things you're going to want to check, your audio levels, your, that you have good lighting, um, a strong Wi-Fi signal and camera placement. You want to make sure your camera is um, level or slightly higher than your head um, for a professional looking angle. You want to look, you know, make sure you've got some natural light so you look well lit um, and you want to look at your background. What's behind you where you're setting up your tablet or computer? Is it like, you know, not too many distractions or is it a really messy space or messy bookshelf? These things are things you're gonna to wanna to think about. So maybe you find a dedicated space that you um, use for these interviews or even from working from home where you do these remote, um, you know, videos. We're all adapting to whatever spaces, you know, we live in um, and where we can do this, these types of interviews. Um, so when it's time for the interview, definitely you want to try to log in a bit early. So maybe five or 10 minutes before to make sure it works. Double check all your technology is working. Your connection is good. You want to make sure that you, um, you know, turn off any background noise. So um, TV, um, you know, TV, internet, music, um, pets are sometimes a challenge if you can hear mine. <laughs> So um, sometimes, you know, those things are, are unavoided. So, but definitely try to control what you can. And um, it helps you to work through the nervousness and, and the jitters you might have before the interview, making sure you're all set up. So you want to think about dressing for an interview. So while you may be at home, you might be enjoying, you know, living in fleece right now because it's still pretty cold here. You want to dress as you normally would for an in-person interview, head to toe as well. Um, so you want to make sure because you never know when you have to stand up or accidentally, um, you know, lean too far back in the frame. What happens if your tablet's about to die and you need to go and plug it in? So you're going to need to stand up. So make sure that you're dressed head to toe. So that might be a suit, a full suit. It might be a, you know, a tie, shirt and pants for a gentleman. It might be, you know, a nice sweater set and pants or a skirt for um, a lady, just sort of something that's professional. Um, and especially if you need to stand up at any point. Um, in a video call, your natural tendency is likely to look at the other person's face. Um, to you, you're looking them in the eye, but to them, you might be looking down. So you're going to want to practice this a bit, especially when talking, spend most of the time looking right to the camera, and then you'll be looking them right in the eye and establishing a stronger connection with them doing so. Um, wherever you sit in the interview, maintain a professional posture. Um, so sit in a chair where you can sit upright, um, as if you were across from a hiring manager. And you want to let your facial expressions convey interest and engagement, especially when you're talking, enthusiasm, um, and this may take a bit of practice. So going, you know, going back to practicing with a friend and family member, maybe prior to having your first interview, you're doing some of this. So if you get the job offer, congratulations. Um, it's awesome, you know, and we're going to see more of this definitely over the next little bit. But your remote um, recruitment maybe doesn't end there because you might still have to settle in the salary or benefits or perks. And this is definitely the case in the full time, full time in space. If you're working on a temporary basis, your agency has likely already spoken with you with regards to um, any of those details um, prior to even presenting you. So you're going to have to do this via the video if you're doing it with directly with the client. Um, so you're definitely going to need to be prepared. So the topic of salary will definitely probably come up in one of your video interviews um, if you're dealing directly with a client, um, for sure. Um, so you have to decide whether or not to negotiate and you know an offer upward. Um, 
you know, and you need to decide what to realistically ask for. You need a benchmark to compare your salaries you've been offered against. You want to use salary guides. So as you can see, we have a number of different salary guides for some of our various lines of business. Um, so you can go to roberthalf.ca slash salary dash guide to take a look at them online. So it's definitely a good idea to maybe do this well before you're made an offer. So you have some idea of what's going on in the market. Maybe talk to some people you know that work in this space and talk to the, you know your recruiters to see what, what they're saying. You want to make sure you're prepared. And it's best to maybe let the employer offer a figure first um, as a general rule. So when you know their starting point can give you some leverage during those discussions, but sometimes you can't avoid going first. Um, sometimes the companies will ask in their online applications about your desired salary to ensure the candidate's expectations are even in line with that organization's budget for that type of role. In such a case, you wanna offer maybe a range, um, maybe not the exact figure that is acceptable to you because obviously there's different things that are going to play and importance for every individual. It might not just be compensation. It could be, you know, health and medical and dental benefits. It could be vacation time. It could be, you know, um, things to help you study in terms of tuition reimbursement. So you have to think about what's important to you when going into these, but you wanna be ready when the subject comes up. So when it's the right time to negotiate, um, you want to back up with your request with strong reasons, um, potentially for asking more money than what they're offering. You could simply counter with a higher salary figure and see what happens, but you're likely to get better results if you can state why you might be um, deserving of a higher salary. Do you have certain certifications in the field? Are you fluent in other languages that that business might utilize? Um, you know, is their offer lower to the benchmark for positions, you know, for other organizations similar to them for the location that the job is in. Um, but when you can December, just demonstrate why you might be worth more, the employer may, may increase their initial offer. And I mean, there is the chance they may not. So you will need to weather whether that's the right fit. You know, whether it's a first, second, third interview, observe all the rules that we went over previously about the video interview. So your body language, verbal language. You know, you want to be friendly in these discussions. Um, you know, you don't want to be, you know, create adversary with your future employer. Be polite, tactful, professional, and always be graceful. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to interview for jobs right now, and they may not be the right fit. It might be salary. It might just be the, the type of um, role. Or, you know, maybe you need to work from home more right now, and maybe that's, you know, or in the future, and that maybe may or may not be a you know, an option, but definitely decline it gracefully because you never know what opportunities might open up, you know, down the line potentially with that organization um, for you in the future. So we are seeing this now. Um, we probably would have never even imagined this back in February, but we are seeing people ask employees to start on their first day by telecommuting. Um, the only play, way that most organizations are onboarding new employees right now. Some are, you know, be able to provide, you know, technology for that candidate. Some are working on some technology of their own for the time being. So, you know, in this age of social distancing, most jobs are adapting to people working from home. It's a new experience. Many, you know, may have been indicating before that, you know, you can't do a particular job from home. But I think this is, is evolving that because many people right now are doing that. So, you know, people are starting, um, you know, remotely without their manager, without their colleagues and likely potentially never having met them in person. So let's discuss a few tips about how to handle your first days and weeks on the job. So you may have to create your own onboarding experience. This is brand new. I think most organizations the last little bit have been you know, trying to wrap their head around their own staff working from home and, and many were not doing so prior to this. So they've just gotten that. So they are creating onboarding experiences probably on, on the fly right now a little bit, you know, um, and it's a bit of trial and error. So, you know, smaller firms and startups may, you know, not have as formal maybe onboarding to maybe bigger organizations, but you're gonna be asked about documents. Um, you wanna review all the documents. So. You know, this is company materials, links to videos the company can provide you with on an overview of firm's policies, codes of conduct, and best practices. You're often signing these when you're being onboarded, so this might be done virtually. You definitely want to familiarize yourself before day one to give you a head start um, on the firm's organizational culture 
And if you're confused about anything, make a list of non-urgent questions and maybe present them a few days before um, or during calls with your manager and check in, um, maybe not bombarding them all at once. There's a lot of different demands right now, but so important to write them down. I think right now many of us are struggling sometimes to remember what day to day what's going on. So for sure, paper or something in your phone is your friend in terms of jotting these down. So you've successfully landed the job you want, you're ready to start, but you've had zero physical face time with your new team members. To communicate right now, you're going to be using email, chat apps, phone, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Skype, etc. Um, so I think in the first few weeks to try to build those relationships, you're going to want to try to connect as much as possible via video. Um, this allows your new colleagues to see your face, expressions, mannerisms, to build a relationship face-to-face, -face, but virtually, and helps you to get to know them too and establish some personal connections. Um, you know, your laptop's gonna be your most essential tool right now. You know, you've got all the software on there that you need to have the constant communications with coworkers, but also try to, you know, see if you can get a headset. It makes life easier um, for sure with one, especially if you spend a lot of time on the phones during the day. Um, so if your company uses a messaging platform, so Microsoft Teams, for example, you want to have it open during the day and visible whenever possible. So you, you don't miss the alerts you can respond to messages quickly um, and make sure that, you know, working remotely, there's going to be technology challenges. Make sure you've got, you know, or other questions you might have direct lines or, or extensions to people in IT, the administrative people that can help you with equipment and software. So maybe jot those down on, you know, that list of questions. So you've got it in a space that you can easily um, get to it. So in addition to team meetings and project conference calls, it's a great idea to, to set up one-on-one -on -one calls with your supervisor, any team members you're gonna be working with closely. Hopefully they may have been pro proactive about it, but you know, if not, then it's definitely, you would wanna maybe set something up. You know, When you talk to your supervisor, ask for feedback. So at the end of the first week, how did the first week go? Is there anything you could improve on in communi including communicating from afar? Um, maybe there's, you've got some suggestions on what maybe would work better. Everyone is learning right now. So it's important to gauge this, um, you know, this kind of, you know, feedback and information from the beginning of the position, especially when it's remote. You want to make sure you're right on right on the right track to begin with. You know, you don't have someone sitting next to you that you might be shadowing. Um, so, you know, it's going to be virtual and, you know, you definitely may have to be proactive in asking is your manager or team members might be just managing a lot of stuff right now um, with the new normal. So, but be open, be open to criticism, constructive criticism. It's great, it will help you grow in the position. And you know, at some point you might be going back to an office. Maybe it's not full-time and it might not be for a while, but eventually you might migrate and maybe have a new normal. It might be full-time back at the office. It might be a mix of working from home or full-time. So you wanna build these relationships from the start. So if you're lacking anything that's necessary to do your job or keeping in touch with the team, you definitely need to ask for it. It's not a time to be shy or think that maybe, you know, the questions aren't good ones and, you know, you should know this. Um, definitely your manager, your company, your team wants to set you up for success. Um, and they might simply not know that you're missing something unless you ask or tell them. Um, sometimes people are really shy because they feel like they don't have relationships with the person they're reporting to right now. So they're just trying to navigate on their own but definitely I recommend um, that you um, ask, you know, and let them know that you need some help. So the video call, your lifeline during the pandemic. I didn't do many of them before this, I'm definitely doing more now, but you know, you're definitely going to have to embrace this, not only for the job interview, but working um, in this environment as well. So, you know, just get started. Eventually it will get easier. You know, we've talked about the exchanging instant messaging, which many people do. They text, you know, maybe personally, you know, launching these get acquainted um, calls. But when you're on board, you know, this is kind of the lifeline to help you through this pandemic, however long it will go, um, you know, and as, as long as, you know, our teams are remotely, it's going to be potentially a conference call, it might be one-on-one -on -one calls. 
You know, you're going to want to learn to professionally participate in video calls, and this is going to help with your success. But there are some faux pas to avoid. So being tardy to the party. So trying not to wait until the last minute to prepare for the conference call. Um, and then you're, you might not be able to get on. Um, you know, so you want to try to log in maybe before if you can, um, you know, or for your, if you have morning meetings or midday meetings or late day meetings, you might want to log on um, to make sure. Sometimes our Wi-Fi doesn't log in right in the morning um, right away. So sometimes there can be a bit of a delay. So you want to make sure you've got all the necessary hardware and software at home. You know, maybe you ensure at the end of the day that's in a space that is your dedicated workspace. So you're not struggling in the morning, trying to figure out where it is. Um, you know, make sure you've got anything to plug in your technology close by. If you need a headset, if you need a notebook, a uh, pen, uh, for us that are still old school. And then definitely, um, if you anticipate being late, definitely try to let the host or participants know. Um, you know, if it's maybe a bigger call, you know, you know, you might be able to log in. Um, but yeah, if it's a smaller call, definitely message them if you're having problems logging in. So causing a commotion. Nothing interrupts the flow of conversation quite like a ringing cell phone, the dog, um, maybe a siren. Find a quiet cloak location if possible for these kind of calls. Obviously, most of us are dealing with different challenges working at home. You know, might be outside noise distractions that we can't avoid. It might be pets. Because sometimes, you know, when they want something, they're going to let you know. Um, you know, the cell phone, you're able to maybe put it on mute um, to make sure that you don't have that ringing. You can put yourself on mute, maybe if you're just a participant and you're not speaking within the conversation. Um, but yeah, but you know, definitely, definitely on occasion, these things are going to come up. And even if, you know, people have children at home, sometimes they are not going to wait. So if you can't find the quiet place, um, you know, you're allowed to enter most video conferencing services on mute. Often when there are bigger meetings, that's automatically what's going to happen. So during the meeting, um, regardless if you're not on mute, you can mute your mic when you're not speaking. So that way people aren't hearing the distractions. You know, just remember if you're going to unmute yourself when you have something to say within that call and then remute again. And, what, and one last thing on the last slide is, you, um, you know, during the pandemic, it's sometimes going to be, you know, there's going to be interruptions and we're all going through this. Um, you know, if something does happen in your background while you're speaking, apologize, move on. We're in this together. It helps to be forgiving, you know, because a lot of stuff is beyond our control right now. And we're just all learning on, you know, as we go along. So other things to avoid on the, on the um, video calls. Multitasking, if you're checking email, searching the web, you're not paying attention to the discussion at hand. You wanna be able to fully participate in online events, you know, eliminate all distractions that might happen, you know, and you don't wanna be caught off guard because you were busy reading, you know, a report or an email, um, maybe finishing your workout, maybe you're like kind of watching something on TV. You wanna make sure that you don't have any other distractions. You're actively listening, engaging, able to comment if you're called upon, or if you, you have something to contribute. Um, so definitely, you know, sort of turning off those um, things that might distract you. Try not to dominate the conversation. It's can easy, easy to go on, you know, when you can't pick up on your colleague's body language or nonverbal cues, you know, unless you're delivering a presentation, you know, you don't wanna monopolize the discussion. Contribute your thoughts succinctly, you know, give others an opportunity to also do so. You know, sometimes there's an audio delay, so you might want to wait before resuming um, to avoid talking over someone. I know this is definitely, I'm seeing this in some like even Zoom calls where friends, everybody wants to talk at all at once. So this is a whole new learning. And you don't want to just stay silent. Virtual meetings aren't an excuse to sit back and let others do the talking. You're a valuable team member, whether you're a new team member, whether you're a team member that's been part of the organization for a long time. You know, you want to speak up. If you've got something to share, you definitely want to share it, but you make sure that you're keeping your comments on target. So being quick to judge. Um, right now, I think we all have to remember to be kind and patient with our colleagues, you know, and our business partners, if we're, you know, you know, communicating with them via online, 
meetings. People have different comfort level with technology. Some have been using it a long time, some don't. You know, they're getting used to virtual calls. Um, they're getting used to, many of us are getting used to working from home for the first time. So mistakes can happen to the best of us. You know, you wanna practice patience, forgiveness. Um, you know, if someone breaches a conference call etiquette or etiquette just in general, um, some factors might be out of their control. Um, you know, and um, you know, it's, you know, it's important maybe if these things are happening, maybe someone needs a bit of training in terms of optimizing future virtual get togethers. Um, you know, definitely be, be, you know, patient with us, especially us new to, new to technology. And thank you for joining us. I know this has been a really difficult um, period of time. I know um, from talking to many candidates over the last nine weeks, I've been working from home. Um, you know, there's a lot of challenges, you know, challenges for people that are working from home, challenges for people that are on the job search, whether they have just moved here and then all of a sudden everything shut down or they've been on the job search for a bit, um, you know, trying to find an opportunity and it's been a bit challenging. Um, you know, we're all in this together. I think we need to be mindful. This is a very, very stressful time. Um, having worked through a number of the crises before, this is definitely something that's new even to me. Um, and you wanna be mindful of people. People are, you know, they're stressed, they're experiencing anxiety of, you know, not knowing what's ahead. Um, they may have friends or family members that have been impacted by this disease. And, you know, just not being able to see your family and friends and colleagues can be challenging in itself. So if you're having a, a rough day, maybe that's the day you're maybe like, you know what, I just need to take a break from my job search. I need to, you know, take some time to rest and be and reflect and please don't feel guilty about that. Um, you know, the job market will eventually definitely get better, um, but just keep on the job search for sure. Um, and doing little steps, even if you're not seeing success today, eventually success will, and will come in a job. So thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, we have lots of questions here. So I, I will start reading all the questions in the Q&A tab and you can continue adding some questions um, as we speak. Um, all right, so good question here. How do you think employers will perceive teamwork skills in the case of remote working? I think it's gonna be really, really important. You know, um, you're gonna have to rely on your teams in, in different ways now. My own, my own team, we do three meetings a day. We probably didn't do that many meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, did a, we did a morning meeting, but now we actually have check-ins three times a day where we get on now Microsoft Teams and, and you know, we, we chat. We chat about what's going on, you know. Some days are busier than others um, in terms of opportunities we can work on, um, which is driven by our clients. So, you know, we're talking about what's going on. What are we hearing? Um, you know, and stuff. So that keeps us connected, you know, and we put the video screens on. So, um, you know, and that way, that way we're, we're continuing the relationship, you know, virtually, because we have not seen each other in nine weeks. Um, and that might be, you know, still the case for, for quite a bit. So we find those useful. We do them as well. Um, but I think, you know, you've just got to pick up the phone. I hear, you know, sometimes people saying, well, I don't want to bother someone to ask them. Um, but yeah, if you've got questions, you definitely want to reach out, but I think teamwork is essential because if I'm super busy and I need help, I need to like, you know, it's not like I can turn around and, you know, ask someone on my team to help me with something. I've got to either, you know, video or IM them or call them, um, to ask for help, especially if I'm working under a deadline. So I think it's going to be crucial. So you're going to, if you're new, you're going to have to try to build some of those relationships, um, remotely. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a huge shift for everyone, for sure. Um, next question here is, what do you think about post um, application process? So I guess like if you haven't uh, heard from them for an interview, um, should you be reaching out to these companies? Should you be calling them? Is that frowned upon? I think it's similar to previously. You know, if you've applied for a job and you have the ability to connect with someone, um, you know, with the phone systems, it's a lot harder. Even before we went into COVID, some, you know, phone systems don't have the ability if you don't have someone's extension mm -hmm. or direct line to call them. So you've got those challenges, but say you're, you know, you're interviewing for a job and you've been dealing with HR, you know, you've got their contact details. So I think it's okay to be connecting back with them. You want to be mindful. You're not calling them, 
you know, five times in a row and they've registered that on their phone um, or leaving a message every day. So you want to be mindful with the follow-up. Um, but yeah, if you've got the contacts, that's for sure, you know, a great thing. Um, you know, but I think when you, e you know, if you call or email them, I think you want to be mindful to the situation. You don't know what they're personally going through right now or what challenges they have. Um, so please be mindful in those communications. Thank you. And many recruiters ask for Canadian experience uh, in the current situation. What can new immigrants do in this case? You know, for me, it's, you know, if I have a role, it's, you know, is the candidate the strongest fit for the, the requirements that client has given us? So, for example, must have and nice to have requirements. So that's what I'm focused on. Sometimes that is someone that's worked here. Sometimes it's not. Um, it's really going, you know, going to be the strongest fit. Right now, getting Canadian experience may be a bit more challenging. I know some newcomers that have moved um, to Toronto, had not found work, who are out there doing, you know, some jobs to help on the front, you know, with some of the essential services right now um, during COVID. So, for example, they might be working, you know, in a grocery store, you know, a store providing essential items, you know, behind the scenes, shipping. Maybe they're doing, you know, some customer service. So, they're, you know, some people are getting some experience there, maybe more on the soft skills, maybe not related. Um, but right now is a great time if you're not working, not only doing the job search, but, you know, doing some of these webinars. There are a lot of free webinars out there. I see them posted on LinkedIn all the time. Um, you know, people posting them on social media, log into those, you know, learn new things about what's going on here learn new things about maybe it's different technology. I mean, LinkedIn has training. There's other training tools. So utilizing that time and building your network. You know, starting to make connections on LinkedIn. Is there a company you want to work for? Maybe finding individuals that work for that company and sending them a personalized LinkedIn invite. Don't just send a, you know, random, you know, click, please connect kind of thing. Actually writing something to them. Because um, you never know, might someone might have some time right now to have a discussion with you, maybe an information interview. Um, you know, if you're in one of the access programs right now, you've got a great network there. Make sure you're connected with those. Maybe connecting with some access alumni. Um, maybe connecting with people that work, went to your school or organizations you work with overseas that are now here in Canada. Um, this is a great time. Well, you can't network in person. You can't go to events. Um, you know, learn about the market through various other means and what tips might help you be successful. Thank you, Michelle. We actually have tons of webinars every day happening throughout uh, with our programs or just in general as well. So um, we just had one last week, I believe it was on Friday on um, Canadian Workplace. Um, and I think it was great just like putting insight on um, just the Canadian Workplace and how it's different. And um, so webinars like these keep coming up. So please, you know, keep an eye out for them or you can get in touch with an employment consultant at Access and we will be able to help you with your job search as well. Um, next question is um, salary ranges. Is it okay to mention the salary range or because it's, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable when you're talking about it to your employer and when and uh, where should you mention it? Well, like going back to some of the slides that we discussed earlier, you definitely want to have a range in mind. Sometimes you're asked for it up front, maybe when you apply to a role, um, you know, and sometimes you might be asked in the discussion. They might not tell you sort of what they're looking to. So you do want to do some research prior to that. If you're working through an agency, they are likely to have some insights um, on a full time basis to what that client is looking um, for for that role. Um, you know, and on a temporary role, when I'm calling to discuss a role, I know what I can pay on that role and I'm discussing it at that time. So if a candidate is not interested, you know, you, they can decline or, or decide they want to maybe move forward with their candidacy. And um, willingness to relocate, when you have that on your resume, how do employers take this? Do they take this positively or do they think, um, I don't know, do they consider it? Would they consider a, um, a candidate that has it on their resume? To be honest, I don't know because I work in the temporary market. So I'm working with people, my roles are in Toronto or the greater Toronto area. So I'm focused on candidates that can move within that, that, that area. So if I call someone, you know, my roles in Mississauga and that person works in Oshawa, you know, or lives in Oshawa, they might say no because the location doesn't work. They might be able to shift closer to Mississauga. You know, I don't know, I don't know how, how they would take it. 
for me, it's, you know, if, my, if I call them and they can go to the location, but they need to be in the greater Toronto area. Mm-hmm. You know, I won't be presenting someone prior to them actually being here. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So, yes, so there's a lot of questions about getting in touch with an uh, employment consultant. I will answer that question towards the end. And, um, all right, let me just quickly... Um, do you think that hiring, obviously, they, do you think that there's less people hiring right now? I think it's a mix because I think people that are hiring right now are for roles that they need help with. Um, so yeah, and I can only speak to my own area. I know there's hiring going on. I can't, you know, I don't, you know, 100% what roles those are, but we're seeing them in different, you know, types of roles. Um, you know, in, in the beginning of COVID, we saw a lot, you know, focused to customer service and admin. Now we're seeing them into, you know, more specialized things. But at the end of the day, especially in the temporary market, it's driven on a need for a temporary resource in a particular area. And that drives maybe what someone is looking for. Um, but organizations are hiring. I'm talking to candidates every day that are telling me they are getting, you know, jobs, sometimes full-time jobs, sometimes, you know, maybe more contract jobs. Um, and some of them were interviewing for them maybe prior to everything. Um, and some have told me, you know, things have gone on hold. Companies right now are just trying to, to manage right now through things. But, you know, at some point we're going to come out of this and you want to be prepared for when that happens. And, you know, we might have a new normal. We might not at all be going to an office on the same day. We might still have, you know, a bit of remote work. We might have a mix of it. Um, but, you know, at some point things are going to start to turn around. It's hard to see that right now, for sure. Um, but having worked through a few other, you know, times like this, it definitely will eventually um, come to be. But where the needs will be, we won't know. We won't know till that point. Thank you. And um, do you think this is a good time for people to come to Canada if they're have been approved for PR? Um, or should they wait until, you know, this is a little, um, this has died down a bit? I mean, that's a, I, I don't know that I can answer that question because obviously everybody's circumstances is, is different. You know, and, and like I said, we don't know what people are going to be hiring for, you know, and how these roles are going to come in. So, you know, that's hard to say because everybody's going to have a different professional background coming here. Um, you know, it's how long are we going to be isolated? You know, um, obviously there's some quarantine rules that exist right now when people come here. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know that I'm maybe that qualified to answer. Um, about whether it's a good time or not. I know a lot of people came here right before and have been sort of in, in a bit of a lockdown right now, um, but many of them are continuing to do job searches here. They may not have seen the results yet of it. Thank you. And um, do you think employers will still be having job fairs and or would they be doing them virtually? I don't know if we're going to see a lot of big events for quite some time. You know, I, I see what gets canceled. I've seen events that, you know, happen yearly, you know, that have already been canceled in not job fairs, but other events that are already, they're already canceling mm-hmm. into the fall. So that to a me- A lot of networking and events like those are definitely being canceled. Yeah, and even just like events that happen, you know, in Toronto every year that have happened, you know, for Toronto and around for, for, you know, decades and decades where they're already saying, you know what, we're not gonna hold this this year. Mm -hmm. So I really think that, you know, we're not going to see a lot of big events, you know, for quite some time, you know, where you're going to have a large amount of people together. I don't know that a lot of people will want to be with a large amount of people for quite some time until maybe, you know, we have a vaccine. Who knows? I mean, there's, everyone has different comfort levels, um, you know, around, you know, being around people right now. And, you know, there's a lot of anxiety around it. So Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're going to see a lot more, you know, online type of stuff happening. Who knows? Maybe companies will do job fairs online. So, yeah, we, we do have uh, done a few job fairs online in the past, and we, are, we do have some upcoming. Uh, and um, 
for like if you want to know when it's happening follow us on our linkedin you'll be able to see um what job fairs are being promoted if you're working with an employment consultant they'll be able to make sure that you you get entered for the virtual job fair and we have a lot of speed mentoring events and just general networking events that we are hosting online as well so again follow us on our social media or talk to one of our employment consultants to find out when and where the uh, these are happening and um uh, what would you recommend for job seekers who have been unemployed for a long time um like let's say they have a huge gap on their resume um what can they do to you know get back into the market i think right now is to utilize some of the time maybe for some learning you know taking if you can take some mm -hmm. courses online because that will bridge a bit of the gap um but i know there are some courses that are on hold and i don't know if they're on hold to register for the course but the exams are definitely on hold you know i'm hearing that from many of my candidates that are you know pursuing the canadian securities course where now they're waiting for exam dates because they physically need to be able to go into person um but yeah if there's a course you're thinking about i know people that are doing the acams right now um you know that are working on some remote coach courses so if that's you know if you're able to do that you know many of them some of those more formal courses obviously there's some you know set, you know compensation that you have to put out so that may or may not be um some people may or may not be able to do that right now but if you're you know thinking about a designation or thinking about getting something this might be a really great time to utilize that time there's a lot of like you know free courses online i keep reading about um you know I mean, I was going to say volunteering, it might be a bit more challenging remotely, but there might still be some remote things that you can put on your resume. But there's going to be many people right now, I think, coming out of this, you know, there are many people that have been impacted by temporary layoffs that, you know, they're going to be in similar situations where there are going to be some gaps. Um, you know, and it's, yeah, I guess it's every employer how they're going to view it. But if there's some things you can do, um, maybe you start to post on LinkedIn, you write your own articles, maybe you know, you're creating your own content. I know a number of people that are creating like podcasts and their own webinars right now. Um, you know, there's nothing stopping you because there's so much technology. You could just start something and grow it. Thank you. And what are some good platforms to apply for jobs or websites where you can apply for jobs? I mean, I think you want to look um, at the company job boards um, of the companies you want to look for. Um, you know, and you may not see a lot, but you might see an option to put in a resume for future roles on there. I think I would utilize LinkedIn a lot. A lot of um, individuals do that. If you're, you know, looking to work with recruiters, find some recruiters that focus in your area. Get some referrals from some people you need, you, um, you know, you know who have utilized them or know that they've got expertise in your area and connect in with them. You know, give them a call, send them a resume create those initial, um, you know, relationships. Cause sometimes, you know, it's a good time to do so because when all of a sudden there's a job, if that person doesn't know about you, you might miss out on something that might be a good fit. So that's a really good time to maybe start to, to focus a bit of your efforts there. And like I was saying before, you know, looking at, you know, your LinkedIn profile, what does it look like? Do I need to make some updates to it? You know, looking at the materials you're sending out your resume and, um, you know your cover letter and those you know what does it look like you know is it properly reflect me and my brand um does it need some work um so now's maybe a time to to spend especially if you've been applying and not hearing anything you know maybe it's time to tweak your resume a bit thank you and working from home how do you like set rules for yourself to you know have a good routine and um, how to be productive uh, yeah, yeah, this is new to me. I did it on occasion um, prior to this, but often when I would not work in my main office, I would work in a office closer, closer to home for me. Um, I, I start working around usually around 830. I don't, I log in maybe a little bit before that, but you know, I don't, I sort of tend to start my work day as I would start my work day if I was in an office. Um, I take a lunch break. So after we have our lunchtime call, I shut my tablet down for a bit. I make my lunch. You know, I said I watch the news because I like to know what's going on um, in the world with everything that's going on locally. See, see what it is. Um, you know, I may go for a walk. Um, and then at night, you know, I tend to 
depends on the day, what time I log, log off. I might log off at five. Sometimes I might log off later. I might still be calling candidates and stuff like that. But once I log off at night, I'm logged off to the next morning. I log off on Friday. I don't log in till Monday because I deal with the work I need to do if I have any deadlines prior to that. And I've actually started on the weekends um, actually closing down my LinkedIn even on my, um, my personal devices. So I'm not me getting messages to give myself some physical space and a bit of a break and a bit of a rest because sometimes it can all just blur into one another. Mm -hmm. so I find that super helpful. Um, you know, I can't say I dress up every day. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I put on something comfy. <laughs> um, yeah, I've kind of like some of the routine I might, you know, I might not put on makeup and, and that's fine. Um, so, but I just find that I just really try to structure my days. But, you know, like when I was working, I would go for a walk at lunch. So whereas I might not be going for a walk now, I might save it for the end of the day. I'm trying to keep the routine of having a bit of a lunch break, um, you know, where I have some quiet time. So I think it's, you know, finding out, you know, I have certain spaces I work in. Um, yeah, it's just creating a little bit of, I think, work-life balance. And that can be harder when you're working from home, but I find these have been really helpful to me, you know, just shutting down and, and shutting down on the weekends. I think, you know, often before this, I would keep my LinkedIn open, but I would constantly get messages. Um, there. So I find hopefully that's a habit I'm going to keep up, you know, as we go forward, just to give, you know, some personal space and a little bit of quiet. And I think, you know, you know, while you're working from home, I think this, this, everything that's going on is just, it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. We have a new normal. We're separated from our family and friends in most cases for a lot of us. So I think just things to take care of your, your well being. But I find that, you know, the one thing that's helped um, tremendously um, is going out to walk. Yeah. Thank you. Very good tips for sure. Um, is a cover letter a must while submitting an online application? I think it's great. I think it's a great way to sell, you know, yourself, your experience, why you might be a good fit for a role that's, you know, might not be at first glance why it's a good fit and it might set you apart. It gets to show a bit of your writing skills. So whether you're doing it in a formal cover letter, if you do that, attach it as a separate document or you might send it in an email when submitting your resume for the summary, but check it for spelling, grammar, you know, sentence structure, you know, avoid using any text talk, emojis, make sure it's a professional document, whether you're emailing or sending it as attachment. Thank you. And um, how can you start networking with someone on LinkedIn that you don't know? Um, you know, what's the safe message to send to them uh, out of fear of getting rejected and them ignoring you? Um, I think going back to sending a personal invite, you know, if you've just moved here, you might be, you know, I'm a financial, like say for if you're in financial service, I'm a financial services professional. I came across your profile, um, would love to connect, you know, or I have some interest in this organization. You know, I took a look, I, you seem to have an impressive profile, would love to connect, but I think it's really keeping it personal. And don't take it personally if someone doesn't accept your invite. I know people don't always accept mine. So um, yeah, if not, you know, just keep applying, but join these groups and start commenting on things because people will start to get you to know your name. And then you can maybe just sort of start to, to network that way. Many people have groups online in these webinars and you'll start to see faces and maybe you connect after the webinar, you know? You know, I loved what you were saying on this chat. Maybe it's the leader of the webinar and their guest. Thank you. Um, so building relationships with coworkers, it is very important, but it's easier to do it in the workplace because, you know, you can have lunch together, you see each other. Um, how would you do this um, remotely now? I think using the video where you're actually physically seeing someone, mm -hmm. um, you know, or you're getting, you know, to see them or picking up the phone and having discussions and stuff like that. Obviously it's, you know, people build relationships online all the time. So, you know, that's definitely happening more so even personally now. So, you know, just, you know, pick up the phone, pay, start a video chat, you know, invite someone, maybe some people have, some people might have lunch together um, virtually. You know, I've heard of that happening where people, you know, they log on at a certain time and they have lunch, maybe if they have like a lunch group at work. Um, yeah, it may take a bit of effort, but I think it's still, it's still doable for sure. Thank you, Michelle. So that's uh, all the time we have for today's webinar. Um, before I move forward, is there anything you'd like to say, Michelle? 
No, um, thanks so much for, for joining us for the questions. Um, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me there. I try to post uh, tips on occasion, but I think just keep, um, you know, at things, um, you know, your job search, small steps every day. I know some days are going to be challenging. They're challenging for everybody right now. And, and don't, you know, don't take it personally if you're having an off day or you're not hearing things, you know, we're in a very unique time right now um, that we just need to work through. So um, don't get down on yourself, keep at it. Hopefully some of these tips were helpful and um, I'll look forward to hearing about people's successes down the line.